Fantastic. And that'll actually be recorded as well. That's nice. <laughs> okay. We're here for something of a recap vlog. Now, I must admit, this is take two. We did this yesterday with Chris and uh, my audio didn't work at all. He's very kindly, very sportingly agreed to let me come back and shoot it. And we'll have the conversation as if we didn't have the conversation yesterday. But it should be a good one. You guys might recognize this. Um, this farm from a previous vlog. It's where we came just a bit later than this time last year because we had some lands that weren't really performing very well. We'll talk a bit about it as we're going down there. If you want to go and see that vlog or you haven't already seen it, I've put the link to that in the video description. I'm off, in theory, finished work, but it's always good to come and check up on things before I go. Looks like things are going great guns at the moment. Hopefully they continue in the same vein. But we'll talk to Chris, we'll get his thoughts on it as well and, uh, and see how we're getting on relative to our targets. So Chris, we're back. I've explained that we're pretending as if we didn't have this conversation <laughs> yesterday. The guy, like I was saying, the guys will might recognize you from a, an older vlog where we were looking, it wasn't quite this time last year, it was a bit later on. Yeah. We were looking at some lambs and they were, you'd had a really good um, lamb survival, but the, the growth rates weren't quite there, were they? No, they're quite poor growth rates. Um, yeah. Lamon was excellent, went well. Um, developed okay in the initial stages and then seemed to just stagnate. Just yeah. stall. We should say as well, because we maybe mentioned it in the previous vlog, that your new entrant, or you and your, your wife Kath, a new entrant. Yeah, brand say. new. So this is year four, third lambing yeah. this year. But yeah, no and farming background at all. <laughs> <laughs> We're saying you're in IT, but you've chosen chosen to enter sheep farming, which would make a lot of sheep farmers yeah. uh, slightly perplexed. <laughs> yeah, I'm quite perplexed as well. <laughs> now. Um, and you've got, well, we're just passing the pedigree flock here. There's a small yeah. flock of uh, Suffolk's, but the bulk of the flock is, is sort of North of England mules, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, North of England mules. And they go to a, a Suffolk up, don't yeah. they? Yeah. You guys won't know necessarily the geography of Northumberland. We're in a little village called Wingates, and uh, it's it's not the land of milk and honey, but it's a pretty good farm. You know, grows plenty of grass, I would say. Yeah. And when we looked last year uh, at what was going on with these lambs, there was plenty of grass, there was plenty of good grass. Um, so it wasn't that they were being held back in that way. We took some bloods for trace elements, and we took some dung samples. Um, those dung samples are pretty high for worms, and I think it was nearly across the board for trace elements they're pretty light on. So um, uh, cobalt, selenium, and iodine, I think the copper was okay, but I'd have to check. So we gave them some sort of remedial treatments to yeah. keep them going and, and, and pick them up, which they did, but we'll talk about this a bit later. When lambs are sort of held back at an early stage, that can really check them, really, yeah. and really stunt them in the long term. So where did we end up in sort of January? So there was an initial improvement and this sort of gained very slowly up until January. Yeah. We then brought them indoors, creep feed, yeah. trying to finish them. Um, didn't finish any really. No. Um, so they all effectively went for stores yeah. um, to get ready for uh, lambing again yeah. uh, this April. <laughs> and, and the flip side of that was we had a, well, we don't know for certain, but we had a, we had a lesser, sort of lower scan percentage, wasn't it? It wasn't, yeah, it wasn't it, dead it low, was, but it, it was, was lower. It was slightly lower, it was uh, 180%, whereas the previous two years were 200%. So we're, we're suspecting on the, um, on the scanning front, because it wasn't a lot of empties, it was more low twinning, that the lack of grass, because those lambs had to sort of hang around for so much longer than they should have, all that time they're eating grass, taking up space, that means there's less grass then available for tupping. And um, the sort of holy grail, if you like, is to have you know, it would probably never ever happen apart from in a fantastic year on a fantastic farm, but trying to get all the fat lambs away before their mothers are tupped again. Um, because as I say, it's just to do with grass availability. The other thing we were saying yesterday when we were doing take one was, uh, 
There's some great work from AHDB to suggest that, was it, I can't yeah, remember, so 20 kilos at 56 days. Yeah, tw 20 kilos at 56 days, so you want the, the majority of your lambs all at 20 kilos by then, because any underperforming lambs at 56 days never actually catch up, Yeah. and their actual gain start is just plateau. Yeah, exactly, so, so and then it was, yeah, the, and that's kind of what we had, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, um, do you want some of these, Callum? No, we'll have, we'll have some of these. Just behind you, Kaz. There's a nice little group there. Forewarned is forearmed. So this year we've gone a bit more sort of preventative, and they've had had a white wormer for the Matadaris because it was high risk a few weeks ago, and they had a smart shot, which is like a long-acting B12, yeah. which was so they all had a smart shot and a mineral drench. I think did they get yeah, as well? Yeah, mineral drench. Uh, so. Now we're just going to keep on top of it with checking the uh, the worm egg counts of a couple of different mobs here, aren't there? Yeah. And just make sure that's not holding them back. Um, and you can, s well, maybe less obvious to you guys, but you, we can see the difference in them. Yeah, massive um, difference. So these there's a tremendous one just there, isn't there? Like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so these are seven to ten weeks old. Yeah. So these are much younger, I would say, than the ones we we looked at before, yeah. because a these guys will land a bit later than last year. Uh, and I'm here a bit earlier because I'm going off to New Zealand. But uh, you can see the difference. You can also see good meal ewes always know when to come in for a bite of feed, but that's in the nature, bless them. <laughs> Comparing them to the ewe size, just they're doing much better, much better. Pet lamb just in front of us there with the wonky ears. And <laughs> it's, always, it's always those ones that come to the front of the frame. I'm really pleased, they're doing really well. You know, there's no dirty back ends um, yeah. across the board, across the entire flock. Um, but they're, they're already starting to sort of fill out. And uh, we were just good. saying they're getting a little bit of feed, aren't they? J a a small bit just to keep them going, um, just to get, you know, get the room and everything operating, but not a great deal. Um, although the, the mams will, the yows will. Take a fair share. All uh, right. Well, it's what you had left over from what, January, wasn't it? Well, the, yeah, and it's, it's a knock-on. So you know, from January, trying to bring the the slow performers from yeah. last year on, purchase a ton of creep feed. Yeah. Um, and even that only added about five, six kilos yeah. per lamb. Yes, yeah, so it wasn't. It was uh, difficult. Uh, on average, I think every lamb was about seven kilos yeah. of drift of being finished, yeah. which is significant given it was it January. All? Yeah, it, absolutely, absolutely. So we didn't get any finish last year, but what we did have, always got to look for the positives, a fantastic lamb survival. So this year, you've had fantastic lamb survival yeah, again. What did we say? Same, same again. We've had four deaths. Um, How many lambs that be? Well, we've had 230 lambs. Yeah. Um, four, four deaths. Um, all those deaths were sort of during lambing. Yeah. So none, none in the field. Yeah. Um, so doing quite well. Fantastic. So we set ourselves a little bit of a, of a target because it's just arbitrary, really. But we sort of said, well, I think we'll try and get half the lambs well, finished. Yeah. It would be um, good at least as a as an initial for this year to get 50 percent, 100, 120 away. Yeah. Um, just to see where we are. Yeah. Absolutely. So I think well, I think we're on track for that. Yeah, we'll I think see. so. We'll I see. think it's um, it's now a case of you know continued dung samples. We're going to do another round of blood tests just to check yeah. mineral levels and vitamin levels, um, and then continue with the appropriate worming. There you go. You must have a good vet. <laughs> <laughs> I should say we got absolutely soaked yesterday as well, didn't we? It, it was torrential. Like, it wasn't just. <laughs> <laughs> when I got back and looked at that footage, all we can see is us chatting away, getting absolutely sodden. Uh, but never mind. Like as Chris was saying, it's like a different day today. So Chris, uh, I bet you there'll be a lot of people really interested to know what what you work in IT. Are either you or Kath from a farming background? No, at all? no, no farming background at so, all. So what was the <laughs> what was the draw? <laughs> the leap. Um, so the original intent was actually just to get a few acres to keep uh, a couple of horses on. Yeah. Um, but after you know looking around, except that there was nothing about, so we went to the other end of the spectrum. <laughs> 
and uh, yeah, bought a farm. Um, <laughs> and naively, when we first bought it, um, he was like, "Yeah, we'll probably need a dozen or so sheep to keep the grass down." And it's 110 acres. <laughs> and uh, yeah, after the first three days, it was yeah, gonna need more than a dozen sheep. <laughs> but no, we've had some excellent help and support oh, from well. from yourselves and, and and from other from neighbours, etc. And and it's it's that just forming community spirit where yeah. everybody will help and there's tons of advice if you just have to That's ask. It. You almost have to beat back the advice. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a wealth of information oh. that the farmers have got and it's trying just to do little changes yeah. and not trying to do everything and take everything on board. It's too much change. Well, that, that was it. It's, it. We were saying yesterday, <laughs> uh, we were saying that um, when you change everything all at once, which can be the temptation when you're trying to fix a problem, you just throw the kitchen sink at it. Yeah. If you've got, if you can, trying to tweak things one by one is probably the most satisfying way to do it in terms of finding out what the problem is. Because yeah. you change a whole load of things at once and, and you get your result, well, you don't really know, you might have suspicions, but you don't really know what got you to where you want yeah. to be. I mean, it, it, it obviously takes longer, um, but you know, we're in the you know, enviable position where this isn't the sole source of income. Yeah. Obviously, if it was, then you'd probably be looking to change a number yeah, of things because yeah, exactly. you don't have that luxury of time. Yeah, absolutely. And we, do, we see that all the time, but but you're right, when you have that, that luxury, it's, it's good to exercise it. Yeah. And this is the second batch. Again, North of England mules rearing Suffolk lamb. So they should be, you know, good terminal cross. Um, and I mean, the ewes look fit as well. From a lamb perspective, we're looking, because it's a Suffolk uh, cross, we're looking at a target weight of about 48 to 52-ish yeah. kilos. Yeah. Oh yeah, we were saying that because you're selling them live, but I think generally with Suffolk's, and this, correct me if I'm wrong, especially any Suffolk fans, I would say, I would guess, talking to other clients, that you kind of need Suffolk's are maybe a bit heavier. They've got that frame for them to have the finish on them. I would say they maybe need to be a bit heavier than, say, a Texel or a Beltex before they before they're ready to go. If you got if you got a Texel to maybe 50 plus kilos, you might be they might be rather fat. So we were just saying, as you'd expect, there is a variation in them. They're not, but no tiddlers, no big framey ones that are like hat racks. Yeah. We don't know which of these were sired by which tucks. We've got a couple of different Yeah, we've got two, uh, two, two, two Suffolk tops. One's a sort of a registered pedigree one, which is a slighter frame. Yeah. And then we've got sort of a behemoth elephant size Suffolk. <laughs> um, and so there's a little bit of variation in frame yeah. size. So we're gonna track, it's one of the metrics we're gonna track next lambing yeah. is, is is which which lambs are coming from which sire and that was really interesting so i did a vlog with jack and allison mm -hmm. with their shedders and they they knew who you know which yeah. lambs have been sired by which tups with gandalf and eddie and uh and there was a definite difference yeah definite yeah. difference even in birth weight yeah it'd be a real interesting thing to look at next year yeah it's it, the, the more information you gather then obviously yeah. you can act on it can't you well so are you feeling in a better place with these ones this year? I feel year? a lot more confident now because obviously we, we came into lambing quite apprehensive and nervous given last year. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we're in a much, much happier place and really it's just down to just doing some tests yeah. and acting on the science rather than finger in the air. I mean, the test would be, say, all in a couple hundred quid? If, if that. If that, if yeah. that. Um, you know, so effectively it, it, it's the cost of a couple of store lambs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, 
you know, and, and we're just a small outfit. So with with 230, um, you know, if we can finish 200, it's a massive difference just yeah. spending a couple hundred pound yeah. from a commercial outfit. Well, the, the benefits are enormous. Well, exactly. They? So when you've got a thousand sheep, <laughs> uh, yeah. you'll be laughing. But good. So uh, another happy customer. But in all seriousness, if you are a 2022 veterinary graduate, one bit of my meagre hard-won advice would be to follow up on cases like that. Because it's so easy in the cut and thrust of practice to tramp on and, and assume everything's gone to plan. That's not always the case. I've certainly been guilty of it. And as one of my uh, vet school professors would say, it's important to learn from mistakes and ideally someone else's. So that's it for this one. Stay tuned, we've got more coming. I don't know when the first New Zealand vlog's gonna be. I might be in New Zealand by the time this comes out, I'm not sure. If you're looking forward to seeing some New Zealand footage, go ahead and click subscribe if you haven't already. Otherwise, I will see you for the next one.